Val and I are going to have a discussion or a dialogue. And we're going to argue about what is a metaverse and why that, is it important or not. Hey, Val. Yes, I am. I jotted down a note while I listened to your presentation, so I do have a note to start with. <laughs> okay, go for it. All right, Side Armin and I differ in our definition of the metaverse. In fact, I initially wanted to have a boxing ring with boxing gloves, <laughs> gloves so we could show that we argue about this, which is okay. The canonical metaverse. That is, um, that is not the uh, my definition. Um, I guess I typed that wrong. Because the internet itself and all the connected apps of the extended reality he talked about, that's not my metaverse. Those are apps. Apps, apps, apps. And that's, to me, that is online. Now, if, 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 the, if some of the extended metaverse wa um, was the metaverse, well, then, then it seems to me Alexander Bell might have created it when he invented the telephone. Because on the phone... You know, you're entering a shared space across distance in our minds, but that's not the metaverse. And Zoom to me is not the metaverse. That's like a phone with a camera. I am not fully there. So to me, um, Sidearm knows this. I, I, the, the, my definition includes that it's imperative you have an avatar to be in the metaverse. Otherwise, you're online in an online internet app. That's fair enough, Val. Uh, let me just be clear, because you and I, this is you and I have discussed this. What I think you're saying is a metaverse has to have a 3D embodied avatar. Avatar. So I'm in, in, in Second Life, I have red hair and a green suit, and you have books on your head. And I can walk around this room, and I can look at Alberto and and... Magua, and I I agree. I love that. I mean, in real life, I'm a guy. I'm not a girl. And in real life, I don't have red hair. So having a 3D body that you can change, I love that. It's very creative, and it's not available in Zoom unless you put one of those filters on. But even then, it's kind of somebody else has to make it. I can I can make my own body. I can make my own body here. And you can change it. And I've got a zombie right here behind me. I bet he's not a zombie in the real world, though. I'm the same in the real world as my avatar. And I, it's in my name. But, you know, when you talked about what is virtual reality, people used to argue that reading a fiction book was virtual reality because it's in your mind. You're creating a story that never happened. That's not the metaverse. The metaverse to me requires an av avatar and the edge of the metaverse, there's an edge to it. It ends for me when my avatar is not present. And then I simply go online because the internet and a million apps, to me, that's not uh, my definition. And I will share my definition in a minute. Well, Val, I think it's ironic that you, a uh, librarian, say that reading a book is not the metaverse because I am one of those people that says, when I read a good book, I'm in a metaverse. I'm completely somewhere else. My mind, yes. let me let me have my say here. My mind is somewhere else. And I am every bit as flying through the air or um, being who I want to be or having adventures or, or whatever. Um, on the other hand, it's somebody else wrote that book. So it's somebody else's metaverse. Whereas here, I can, I can make my own. Here's the thing about Second Life for me. Here's the issue. I want to reach as many people in the world as I can. Second Life only has 400,000 people a day online. Second Life only has 400,000 people online at once a day. That's nothing compared to Fortnite or uh, Google. And there are 8 billion people in the world. And I you know, I want to reach as many of those 8 billion as I can. So I was almost forced three years ago to start looking outside of Second Life at what other apps were out there that had instant, two-way, multi-user, creative access. So that's why I call it 
something like Zoom or Google Docs. You and I are on Google Docs right now. We have today's agenda on Google Docs, and you're editing it, and I'm editing it, and we're doing instant, two-way, co-creative, multi-user access. We've done that with MAGA. I'm going to do that with Ginger tomorrow. So anything that lets me interact with and talk with people in a, in a visual or a de- cognitive manner is connecting me to the rest of the world digitally and electronically. I say that yes. Second Life is a metaverse app that features 3D embodiment, but other apps do things Second Life can't even touch and that are also metaverses according to a different checklist. Over. Yes, those are great tools. And I think that that is the crux of where we differ is that to me, without the avatar, I'm not in the metaverse. I'm using a great tool. There are many tools. A pencil is a great tool. A fork is a great tool in the physical world. And there are tools in the digital world. But to enter the metaverse, I'm going to put my definition right over here by the uh, signs. But I I love that you've separated yours into canonical and extended. But to me, I combine mine into just one definition. Well, while you put that one out, let me let me take another shot. Mm -hmm. By the way, uh, students and faculty, you are welcome to type in chat if you want to weigh in here. As, as marketing students here, digital marketing students working, some of them are already have jobs. Some of them are going to be looking for jobs. Um, I identify with that. I mean, when I started working after my master's degree, we didn't even have word processing. You know, we had to send it down. So I love the power of computers and digital stuff that lets me do more of my own work. But let's be honest. The things you can make and sell in Second Life are not a lot of money. Then I look online. You know, they have these virtual catalogs where you can custom fit your avatar and put clothing on. I think it's Land's End, if anybody knows Land's End, the big clothing store. You know, they're trying to use um, 3D embodiment to sell things. You know, instead of coming to the store, you can try it on your body and then order it. And, And I think some of those work. I think there's been some success. But what good is Second Life if I'm a digital marketing master's student? What could I learn here that I could apply in all those other apps and things that I'm going to end up using or working with in my companies? What good is Second Life to me as a digital marketing master's student? I can add something here maybe um, in terms of, you know, using Metaverse for marketing purposes or digital marketing or any other tools or any other technology for marketing or digital marketing it's like the the common mistake that we make is when we started to use these things for our work or for our you know education or uh, for our daily lives we don't really understand it first so that particular course is designed to make you understand what it is, basically, what Metaverse is. That is the starting point. But not only what Metaverse is as a definition or, you know, described by words, also you will have the chance to experience it and you will have the chance to to take, you know, to get the sense of it, to the, you will taste it. And whether you'll decide you like it or not, or you might have ideas like, okay, this is this is going to be a big thing, but not yet. Or yes, this is also something that is that I can use for my work today, or uh, for other reasons. Anyway, this is this is the way that we design this course. This is this is normally we are teaching the similar course for undergraduate students, and it takes fourteen weeks for us to get used to uh, you into to use this world and uh, to educate our students. They're uh, basically taking part uh, for two weeks just to learn how to move their avatars. So you're, you're kind of doing it in six weeks, which is a very short time to understand it totally. But then at the same time, we want you to understand the culture in it. We want you to understand how things done in it as much as you could in this six weeks. So that was a 
great example of in this lecture, you have seen many aspects of it. You have seen how people from three continents come together in this pixel created world, world. And then you have seen how we communicate it, how we interact it using chat or voice. And then you have seen different ideas crashing like Saitam's definition versus Valbrarian's definition. So that is, that is going to help us to understand it. Once you understand it totally, then you will find the use of it, or maybe you, you will choose not to use it at all. But in my opinion, if you look at the history of the technology, like internet, internet was found in 1960s and 1995, the first electronic commerce happened. And after that, people think that it has a great potential. And then we got the year 2000, year 2000, we got the dot-com crisis. It, it, it crashed, the whole market crashed. And then people think, no, it was a balloon. The internet was not a big thing as we thought. The e-commerce is not going to happen as we thought. But then again, yes. it took off. So, so it, it takes um, time. It, yeah. Good. Thank you. Um, again, I... Uh... In a little, in, in some way, so just so you guys know, I'm being very, very provocative with Val and Magua. Um, I am deliberately pushing back about Second Life. But I also want you guys to understand, I have not found any alternative to Second Life for 3D embodiment that you can make your own world. You can sell your own work if you want. You could find somebody that makes things and sell it for them on the marketplace. I, When I came to Second Life, I started my own business and I made money here. That's why I left corporate. So no other 3D metaverse lets you build your own stuff and sell your own stuff without having five years of training as a mesh digital artist on CAD CAM and Photoshop and things like that. So if you want to learn some basics about marketing, I keep telling Mago she had have a course where you guys come here and design a product and try to sell it on the marketplace. I know one of my students who's doing their master's thesis on marketing in the Second Life marketplace and doing research on it. On the other hand, if you want to learn about digital marketing, there are plenty of other things you could do without having to use a 3D metaverse. Um, the question is, are you seeing more or less 3D cartoon characters in the world? Do you see more or less 3D characters on advertising, on television, and, and uh, cable. I see them all the time. The grocery store has little cartoon avatar. Somebody's making that. Somebody's marketing grocery store food using 3D avatars. So if that area interests you, Second Life, I feel, is a good place to just try some of it on your own or see what other people are doing. So again, we had a little dialogue here, the three of us pushing, because you guys made good points. Is Second Life important? Is the metaverse important? Is meta literacy important? And you guys are saying, well, it seems like it might be important, but it's kind of hard to understand. And like Magwa said, our purpose today was to help you begin to understand better and get your own ideas. Thank you. Val, do you want to closing comments? Well, I love that we had a chance to argue and debate over the topic of met of the metaverse because people are just learning what it is. But you know, and you said um, as a librarian, you couldn't believe I said that fiction is like is, is a virtual experience that's like the metaverse but that's not the metaverse it's it, we need as a librarian i think we need more words with specific definitions not broad terms that we don't even understand what they mean so you know trying to define something and get the best word for it 
that is what my goal is. And to really clearly understand what a metaverse is, what augmented reality is, what an app is, what a, you know, there are a lot of different terms and I would like the definitions to be very clear. Magua, you want to bring us home here? Okay, um, this is a really important to understand the concepts here and what, what, what it is. And, you know, if you look at our avatars, like uh, my other avatar is like, what, 15 years old or 16 years old, and I have been here for some time. And same thing accounts for well and sight. We have been here for years, and we are still trying to understand it. That is the challenging part of it. So it is, um, it, it is evolving itself. It is, uh, technology is developing, new things are added to the, uh, all these uh, metaverse platforms. Uh, now, we, we, some of you mentioned about that the graphics could be better. And yes, there are platforms that the graphics are better, or you're using the goggles in certain platforms. But still, we are, we are in search of those as well. We are, we are looking at, uh, with this team, of uh, faculty that you see here, for example, with Saturn, we are looking at other places, uh, other platforms that we could maybe use. Uh, we could teach there together and so on. We could take our projects to there. But so far, uh, this place kind of uh, attracts us back all the time, Second Life, because it has a loyal community here. There is a community. If you look at all those platforms, which one is going to be the you know most popular one? It is where the community will survive. It is where the people will go, migrate. So if you if you find out that today, then you have an asset in your hand. Go and invest there. So it is uh, really really uh, nice to hear you guys participating, and you are just you know warming up in Second Life with us. It has been only two, three weeks uh, before this, and then this is the fourth week uh, we, we got together. And you are really uh, doing well, in my opinion. Uh, but then uh, it was really nice to hear your ideas, yeah, I... your, uh, your um, concerns, or your wishes about the Metaverse platforms. So I hope it helps you, and I hope it was useful. Thank you very much for Sight and Well. That uh, today they gave us a great lecture uh, and then a great discussion, which we would like to see, like to see far, you know, farther of that in boxing ring or whatever. Thank you very much. <laughs>